parts of the featherweight division, uh, Hiroki turned down the, the uh, title fight with Aldo. Has it hurt him worse losing to Ricardo tonight than it would have him losing to Aldo? No, you know what you, gotta, you guys got to understand is that if a kid feels he's not ready for that title shot, if you lose a title shot, it takes a couple of years to get back there. And apparently he was right. He wasn't ready. Uh, you know, he didn't win tonight and it wasn't for the title. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with a guy saying I'm not ready. And how about Ricardo? Does that put him up uh, closer to title contention? Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a great win for him. Definitely a big win. Um, you know, fighting this long, I feel pretty lucky to have the health and opportunity uh, to keep playing the game that I enjoy. Um, as far as, as the submission in the first round, I think it was a, a Dars or a Bravo. Um, not too tight. He had one, one karate, but he couldn't get to the other one. Um, and I felt I had leverage to change the position when I wanted to. Um, you know, I forced him into a gate and rolled out to all fours and uh, did what I wanted to do. So I'm just glad I was patient enough, but not too stupid and too patient to uh, really let him sink that in. My wrestling game is something I've been working on for a long time and just kind of keeping, you know, on the low profile. And I've been, I, you know, I grew up as a kickboxer that, um, you know, I was so conditioned to just defend takedowns and get back to my feet. But I felt this was the, uh, the right time to, you know, showcase that I can, I'm a mixed martial artist. I can do, you know, I can do it all. And, and I knew Spencer wouldn't be expecting it. And I knew it would give me the edge I needed to, uh, to, to steal those rounds and get that, get that one. It's hard to say, uh, you know, I, uh, I was a little tired, but, uh, you know, he came out hard and he fought hard. So, uh, you know, I, I don't feel so bad. I actually felt walking into the ring like I was fighting back at 185 pounds. I didn't feel any different. So, you know, I don't, I don't think it's much of a change. And how did the, uh, how did the weight cut compare to previous weight cuts? Um, it was harder, obviously, because, uh, you know, I pretty much was a you know, fat kid at 185 pounds. Uh, I wasn't. I uh, was small, just, you know, uh, I think 70s is a natural weight for me. Yeah, you know, one more for Dana. Dana, what did you think of Dana's performance? That looked great. That was a good fight, too. That, that fight was up for fight of the night, too. It was a great fight. He looked good. Pulled off submission against a tough guy. Since you were in Atlantic City, uh, Larry came back, a uh, brand new property. Will we have to wait that long to see you again? Yeah. I hope not. Uh, one of the things that happened is, obviously, you know, this commission was insightful and saw MMA before anybody else did and, and saw the potential in it and, and the fact that it should be legalized. And it was here, we came here, Trump gave us our first shot uh, in Atlantic City and uh, this place has been good to us. Not only the times that we've been here previously, we've done Trump, we've done Boardwalk Hall and now we've, we, we've come here. This has always been a great market for us. The fans are always great and yeah, the, the thing was, this was the first place to sanction it Then we went out and got all the other states and all these other countries over the last, you know, 10 years, and uh, yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back soon. That's this is a great venue here too. It's a great place to watch fights. Perfect uh, amount of seats, and, and there's not a bad seat in the place. So, yeah, we like it. We'll be back. Thank you. Any other for me? Good night, everybody. Right, let's go. A lot of people expected. Um, yeah, tell me about it. How how frustrating was it? And how I mean, I guess shocked knowing what kind of fighter Clay normally is. I mean, how shocked were you that he he did what he did there? It took me two rounds just to know, like, all right, I think this guy's going to do this the whole fight, you know. And uh, personally, I don't act like that. I mean, you know, it's a fight, but I, I, you know, I was pissed off. I'm, you know, I'm a human, too. I get mad, so, you know, I'm here to work. It's work. Were you, uh, when, when the scores were red, you heard split decision. What's going through your mind? I mean, it could go his way, you know. Like, there's people out there that think that's that's like good, you know. Hit, hit, and it's not even moving. It's just like moving to the other end of the cage, you know. A couple steps. I understand that you're still in the pocket. You're still there, like able to hit me. But I mean, you know, I don't know. You gotta understand. It's a fight. Still, you can't just go to the end of the cage and then back to the other end and then back to the other end the whole time. You know, you gotta give me a chance too. And, uh, last question, I know it seemed like you and Clay had a few words on your way out of the cage walking out at the same time. Can you kind of say what exactly happened? It looked like, I don't, did they have to separate? What actually happened there? I don't know, he was mad, I was mad. And uh, I don't even remember. I just got out of a fight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Shark Tank stacked uh, lightweight division. Obviously, Benson and Frankie uh, fighting in, in August, and uh, Nate Diaz in line for the title shot. What's next for you? What's your feelings? Um, are you going to try to clamor for maybe uh, to get Nate to fight you before he waits for the title, or um, you know, what do you think? Uh, who you should fight next, or how how uh, quick should you fight again? Hmm. In your opinion. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Good question. Uh, you know, of course, I'm trying to go for the belt again. And uh, like I told you, you know, I think the Edgar fight, that's a good fight, part four. Um, you know, but the ultimate, you know, is the belt. That's all I want. You know, I come up short a couple times. And, you know, I changed my whole life, my whole life to, to try it again. And now you've gotten the win after cha uh, changing camps. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank AKA, Yao, <coughs> um, just all the guys. You know, it was awesome. Good camp. And if you had lost tonight, would, would you have second guessed the move, or are you, you're still comfortable with it? No, I moved again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Now I would have got back in the gym man, and, and trained harder. I mean, I'm not happy about this fight, but you know. I did. I did all I could, you know, and, and uh, just gotta get back in the gym. Hear what uh, the boss had to say, but um, yeah, I think a little bit more movement. And if I would have landed a few more strikes, I would have gotten a nod. Um, we stuck to our game plan. We were unpredictable. He's a big, heavy puncher, man. Guy hits hard. <laughs> Guy punches holes in walls. I'm sure for practice, and uh, I didn't want my head to be one of those. You know, um, I thought we stuck to our game plan. We kept him guessing. We were in and out. He was swinging for the fences. We weren't there. He landed three or four. Caught me on the cheek one time. Um, I thought we landed enough head kicks. I'm no mathematician, but uh, four or five probably. I'm no one. I'm no kickboxer. Um, I thought we landed some good jabs. The first punch I landed on him cut his nose. My face looks a little worse than his does, but um, yeah, maybe he landed a few more strikes and maybe a little bit more movement. I think I stopped all of his takedowns. I think I, uh, I think sometimes judges get the misconception about what mixed martial arts really is. I think uh, mixed martial arts is the guy who gets hit the least usually is a victor. The guy who's on, you know, is move, you know moving the whole time. I, I can't wait to see the fight metrics or whatever it is and see the strikes that I landed, you know, against the strikes that were thrown. Um, so five rounds of fun. I know Gray had a good time out there. In the third round, I saw a little frustration in his face. That was a plan. And um, our plan was to kind of get in on more singles and doubles, wear him down more, and um, just not sit in the pocket with him. You know, even when we did, we, we landed some good uppercuts, some good hooks, a couple of straights. I felt confident in my, in my combinations, but uh, the dude hits like a mad truck, man. So I didn't want to be there for too much of it. Um, a couple of times, uh, we, he whiffed and almost ran into the fence. So. I felt good about it. We'll get him next time. You know, as uh, most of you guys know, my uh, my coach and mentor and, and brother-in-law and, and one of my best friends, Sean Thomas, died last August. So, um, you know, he was in my corner for every single fight up until the Tavares fight. And, and go talking back to my amateur kickboxing days, every single fight I've ever had. He trained me from the ground up. So it's been very difficult for me to train or to fight without him. Um, that fight with Tavares, I'm not making excuses as to, and, and saying that's why I lost. You know, he, I, he won that fight fair and square, but um, I needed to find somebody else who could, you know, I needed to start, I, I, I don't want to say fill his shoes because nobody could fill Sean Tonka's shoes uh, to me, but, you know, I needed somebody that was putting a game plan together for me and, uh, you know, reminding me and keeping keeping me on track, somebody I could feel confident with uh, in my corner, Mark Delagrati. Uh, I've always had a good relationship with him. We've always been friends, and him and Sean are very close. And I know, um, I know that's somebody. That's who Sean would want um, in my corner. So I reached out to him, and uh, you know, I'm really glad our game plan worked out really well for us tonight. It was hard for me not to uh, just stay in the pocket with uh, when Gray was swinging those big punches, and I started throwing a couple. But then he quickly reminded me when he <laughs> socked me in the face and in the jaw and. The, cheek a couple of times uh, and realized I gotta get the heck out of there. Um, but yeah, I mean, being under the watchful eye of those guys, you know, they're, they're, 
just masters of strategy. You know, there's a science to them. It, it may not be the most exciting, but um, I tell you what, man, um, a, I thought that was a pretty exciting 25-minute fight. Um, those guys put together very good game plans. Um, <coughs> You know, Israel, Israel Martinez wrestling, he's uh, you know, second to none, and I felt that um, my, my wrestling is improving, and that's what the downfall was in the Benson Henderson fight, you know, I wasn't able to get it to the ground. I wasn't as desperate in this fight for a takedown, you know, I, I thought my defense was pretty good up against the fence, um, out in the middle of the cage. But uh, they come up with good game plans, we try to stick to it, and um, you know, I guess the rest is up to the judges. Official attendance number for uh, the guys on deadline is uh, 4,652. That is a sellout, 4,652. Uh, I'm going to go catch a Southwest flight to Brazil. So. <coughs>